Hello, good crowd. I am so excited. I have with us today the founder of Global Vision 2020. He's invented a system for delivering eyeglasses that deliver 2020 vision almost instantly, affordably, anywhere in the world without elaborate uh, ophthalmology kinds of or optometry kinds of things. This is really going to be cool. Don't miss this episode. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Please support the sponsors who made this episode possible, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd and GoodCrowd.School. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Devin. Really happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. It is an honor to be here, to have you on the show. I mean, it's not an honor for me to be on my own show. As you might imagine, I'm often on my own show. But uh, Kevin, Kevin, uh, tell us about this gadget that you've invented or this process. I guess it's yeah. part process, part gadget. Tell us about what it is. Yeah, it's it's um it's a really simple device. The the heart of the kit is this is this UC. We call it the UC. That's U S E E, and essentially it works just like a pair of binoculars. Um, so you've got a negative six diopters at the top and a positive six diopters, and the diopters are measurement of movement of that, of that focal power, and a very small viewing aperture that you can, you can see through there. Um, and as the patient turns that dial, uh, it just changes the focal point back and forth across the retina. So it's very natural, like I said, like a pair of binoculars. And when they stop um, and they see the eye chart clearly, you can take that reading. Um, in this case, it would be like a, like a green one there. And then you grab a lens out of a lens bag that is the exact same power. You snap it in. You do the other eye, take the breathing, snap it in, and then you retest them. And like you said, with this, just within a matter of minutes, you can make a pair of eyeglasses uh, that get someone to twenty to twenty twenty vision. Um, we've, you know, we've been in twenty eight countries and delivered over thirty six thousand pairs of eyeglasses just in the last eighteen months. Wow! My glasses. Yeah. It is, it's really amazing. So how do you, show us how quickly you can, do you have the equipment there to assemble a pair of glasses? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got everything here. So for instance, here's a, here's a nice pair of, of glasses. Oh, you like black, I see. So we have black as well. Um, <laughs> we'll go with black this time. And then the lenses, like I said, so let's just say they were a green one and a red four. So we grab the, the lens bags that have the green one and the, and the, red four, um, you simply snap out the, the Plano lenses, the Plano, just the clear, clear glass, and yeah. that's in there to one, to keep the frame shape, and two, if someone only needs prescription in one eye, or they're blind in one eye, for instance. Yeah. Um, and then these just line up, uh, like so. You snap, pop it in, give it a little push, do the other eye. lines up and then it just pops right in take your um, carefully logoed bag uh, yeah. give the lenses a clean and then that's it you recheck the patient on the eye chart make sure they can see as good as they can see or better than they can see with the UC and then you're done and the cost is less than five dollars per person wow does that include the cost of the glasses and the lenses Yep, everything it includes the cost, the, uh, the the amortized cost of the kit. Um, it should, in most cases, that can in, in include transportation. Uh, depends, you know, obviously on a lot of a lot of different variables. But we're comfortable that we can get, you know, for under five dollars, we could get a pair of glasses on everyone's face in the world. Wow! And uh, how does that change lives? What do you see as you talk to people? Yeah, it. I mean, this, 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 the stories are individual, but they're also ubiquitous. Um, you know, I've, I met uh, a student in Namibia last year. I took my two boys with me, and we screened and dispensed eyeglasses. And he'd been in the second grade for three years. And I asked the teacher, so what's, what's his story? You know, what's this? You know, she's, oh, he, he doesn't pay attention. He's just, a, he's just a bad kid. He stays in the back of the room and, and doesn't do anything. And I said, well, how does he see? And she kind of like, see? What do you mean, how does he see? So we sat him down. And uh, my son, Oliver, screened him, and he ended up, you know, needing pretty heavy prescription. So I, what I like to do is once you get glasses in a room, it's sort of like, okay, the, yeah, the room is clear, but you go outside and you look around, and that's when you can see that, you know, the world, your worldview changes when you can see. So 
I have him point to this. There's a big hill behind us, and he points to the hill, and he and I said, "What do you see?" He says, "A hill." And I said, "Okay, but but what do you see on the hill?" And he says, "Oh, it's a hill. It's a hill. It's you know that's all he could see." So we put on the glasses, and he says, "Oh, I see a bush. I see a goat. I see my friend." And then at the top of the hill, he starts looking up, and at the top of the hill are these two trees. And I found out later that, um, you know, after talking to the principal, that this village kind of defined itself. Or we're the village with a uh, with a hill of two trees. And he just starts pointing. He goes, I see the two trees. I see the two trees. I mean, he was just so excited that he'd never been able to see these two trees that everyone in the village like, oh, yeah, we're the village with the two, you know, the hill with two yeah. trees. Yeah. And and it was it was just life. It was it felt, you know, really life changing for this kid. So it was. And then those stories, you know, are everywhere. Um, a, a grandmother reading to the, for the first time to our grandkids, um, preparing meals, doing things like that. I mean, it's just. We take it for granted. It's so easy for us just to go down to the corner store, grab a pair of readers, or go to the corner optometrist, you know, an optometrist, to get a pair of glasses. We don't see it as a disability, but it's the world's largest disability if you think about it. Oh yeah, uh, it, it can really be transformative to uh, yeah. education and uh, one's profession and career. Imagine if you can't see well enough to read, can't see well enough to right. sew or to fish. I mean, there's so many things. Or, or yeah, or drive or, you know, the, I mean, yeah. the, the driving alone, I think it's like 40, 40 times more likely to get into a, a fatal car wreck in, in some African countries than you are in the U.S. And they, and screening provision is, is not something that happens <laughs> very often. Um, and, and again, that's about access. You know, we have one optometrist for every 8,000 people here in the U.S. In Sub-Saharan Africa, that's closer to one to one million. So even if you had the $200 that it took to get your prescription, you know, all of that thing, which is tough on a dollar or a dollar fifty a day, um, there's just, there's no one there. You have to go to the main city. You have to get in line, you know, and so on. And it's just, it's just not really? possible. So we have to, yeah. So, so my thought was we have to change the way that we can deliver glasses. We have to change the who when it comes to how do we lower that educational threshold so that more people can dispense eyeglasses at lower cost, educate people that the eye is an organ that varies from person to person, and that glasses are the, are the tool that correct for vision. Yeah. And that's what now, the system does. How did you come up with this? Let's go back to your earlier yeah. career because you've had a remarkable career that helped form these ideas really over more than a decade, right? Yeah, yeah. Two thousand and five, um, I was I was a United States Marine, and I got the, one of the coolest jobs ever. I was the, put in charge of humanitarian assistance programs for the DoD for Africa and Eastern Europe. And, and essentially, what I got to do was, you know, spend U.S. dollars, you know, tax dollars on um, outreach programs. So every time a military unit would head to Africa, uh, we would coordinate with the embassy and say, Hey, can we set up a clinic? Can we build a school? Can we do these kind of things? So I got to kind of handle all of the, the logistics and the planning and the budgeting for that. So the first one I went to was uh, in Morocco and it was a, an Air Force medical unit was there and they were doing dental, you know, dentistry and cleft palate surgery and, you know, medicine that we haven't seen in the U.S. for, you know, over a hundred years. Uh, so it was, it was good training, but it was also a really good thing to do. One of the things they did was, was an eyeglasses clinic and I've worn glasses since I was seven years old. So the Navy gave me a laser surgery, so it was all good. But uh, I was very interested in watching this, and it was donated eyeglasses. And I got to tell you, as a professional logistician, I was really offended at how inefficient it was. You know, no one got 20-20 in both eyes, and people were generally picking frames and the style that they liked as opposed to the prescription that they needed. So I watched this one young lady walk out with a pair of glasses on the end of her nose that she liked the look of but didn't work for her, and I said, there has got to be a better way. And then I just started working on it and haven't stopped since. So um, what I found was a pair of fluid-filled eyeglasses um, that you could put on and you can turn a dial and it changes the shape of the lens. Um, but they're, they work, but I couldn't get a whole lot of people to wear them. Um, I mean, we got 30,000 people to wear them, but they were generally older folks that didn't, that didn't care about fashion. or and, and then the cost was, they were still $25 a piece. So... I started working with that, and I and I and I really think that it, it opened the, uh, the the door to self refraction. Um, that was something that um, wasn't kind of a known thing at the time. So in 2013, I retired from the Marine Corps in 2009. 2013, I was sitting at my table saying, you know, 
on the one side, we've got self refraction that anyone can deliver eyeglasses, but very few people are still expensive and few people want to wear them. And on the other side, we've got conventional eyeglasses distribution where you need to be a doctor or an optometric nurse. You need to have like a year, year and a half of training. And everybody wants to wear the glasses because they're nice. Um, but it just, we don't have the infrastructure to develop this, this need, you know, this, this, this group of people to do this. So right in the middle was where it was, was where the gap was. How do you do use self refraction to get to conventional eyeglasses? And I had this, you know, September 15th, 2013, I'm just sitting there and go, it, the light went on and I said, okay, it's a lens, it's limiting the aperture, it's changing the, the shape. And through that, like you said, that was seven, eight years at the time, um, eight years of experience, I'd met people that made lenses. I had become educated on what the needs were, what different, you know, different physics of it. You know, I was a science major at the Naval Academy. Um, so not an optometrist, not an ophthalmologist, not a doctor, um, but just through that general education and meeting people that were experts and, you know, becoming a, an expert in self-refraction, so to speak, um, I managed to come up with a solution that, that the eye health world hadn't, hadn't thought of yet. Well, it's a, a brilliant solution. Now, you have had some success raising money for this uh, nonprofit, as you've established it, on Caring yeah. Crowd. Tell us a little bit about your Caring Crowd experience. Yeah, that, that was an amazing uh, experience. I, I met the Caring Crowd up at, uh, at Yale, Yale University uh, at a um, Unite for Sight conference. And I hadn't heard of it before. And they said, oh, well, this is how we do it. And what, you know, what do you do? And we just started that conversation. And, and immediately came to mind, you know, we had this project that was starting, getting off the ground for Botswana. And it was um, a group of South Africans that get in their vehicles and drive north and, and uh, go to remote areas and, and try to help, try to help their fellow Africans. And they were going to take a kit, but we just needed to figure out where to raise the funds. So we put it on Caring Crowd and um, we got, you know, immediate got traction and, you know, lots of donors put it out on, you know, the normal social media things and uh, people, people stepped up to the plate and hit it out of the park. And so we, that just finished actually. Uh, and we have some really great videos. The stories that you, that you mentioned, we have some videos of stories just like that, where people can see the impact that their, you know, their $5 donation made on the life of a student or a seamstress or even a driver um, who was driving without glasses before. And, you know, as a safari tour guide, <laughs> if you can believe it. Um, that's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that he's the guy that's supposed to be pointing out the wildlife and uh, yeah. he needed a pretty heavy prescription, but he just, he just made do before. And now he's a better, he's better at his job and safer and Oh, you know, yeah. because he's gotten a five dollar pair of eyeglasses. Yeah, people kept wondering why there was a tiger in, or a lion inside the car with them. That's uh, <laughs> you just didn't yeah. see it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's uh, that is remarkable. What what a powerful story. Um, so, did Johnson and Johnson match some of the donations when you were raising on Caring Crowd? They did. Yeah. So that that was about a uh, almost a five thousand dollar project. And about 2,500 of it was raised by, you know, friends and family and, and, um, and Facebook fans. And then the other 2,500 came from Johnson & Johnson. So it was really, a, really a powerful project at, um, you know, and $5,000 is a pretty low cost for, um, you know, the, the kind of impact that we made on these, on these people's lives. Oh, that's, a, that's remarkable. That's remarkable. Um, Kevin, what are you most proud of having accomplished with this work? Um, I would say, you know, almost daily, I get photos from, from some, some of the organizations that, you know, that are in the field giving away eyeglasses. So every day I see a new face that has received a pair of eyeglasses, you know, and I, I haven't seen the 36,000 faces that have, that have gone out, but, you know, even if it's just, a, you know, a hundred or two a month, um, I, every time I get a photo, I, I give it to my website guy and say, hey, put this on. So we've got a faces page and we said, so we just start adding faces to it and just knowing whether that person, you know, just needed reading glasses to keep reading or, or preparing the food for their family or whether it was a driver or a student who couldn't see the chalkboard, you know, that just, that just feels fantastic to, to see that smile, that face, those glasses and, you know, holding up the, the, the Global Vision logo or whatever it is. Um, I would say that that's just a great feeling. It's, it's a humbling feeling to know that, wow, we, 
and 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 I wouldn't be able to do that without these with these out these distributors. So finding them that, that they that they're aligned with us, that they want to tackle the base of the pyramid first, solve the problem, um, give people hope, so that they can you know have a life of that you know, their quality of life is improved, their safety is improved, their education is improved, their job prospects, and you know all of that happens with clearer vision, and it's just uh, it's just fantastic. You know, I just got back from Guatemala where I spent a week volunteering with an organization called Choice Humanitarian. And as I was coming back, I spent a couple of days in Honduras and came back. So I arrived yesterday and I was coming back uh, from Miami to uh, Dallas. I was flying okay. with a group that was coming back from the Dominican Republic. And they had been doing a similar thing in the Dominican Republic. And it, so it occurs to me yep. that there are every day, every week, there are countless yep. mission trips and expeditions yep. and volunteers going out. Uh, is it possible for people in that situation to take a kit with them, to get a kit, take it out, use it? Is yep. that something that you're ready to do now or in the future? How does yep. that work? No, absolutely. We we have, um, and I'm, I'm, it would be really odd, but it could have been Vosh that uh, was in the Dominican Republic just, just recently. And they, you may have run into these, this crowd. Um, they, um, yes. So we, yeah, lots of people buy, buy our kits from us. We, we sell the kits uh, as, as cheaply as we can to, to, to get them out the door. Um, and we give training, either they use the training manual and they call us with questions or we do training online and they take these kits with them. And that, that is the preponderance of, of our distributors right now. Uh, some faith-based groups, some medical groups, um, you know, and various other, uh, some eye hospitals in, in Africa buy kits so that they can use a hub and spoke model. So pretty much every distribution model that's out there that's serving the people at the base of the pyramid, we can bolt on this capability. It really, it, it really is about three to four hours of training to get good at person need eyeglasses, what's their prescription, make them the eyeglasses, and then verify that they work. And, and it really is just a four-step process. So super, super easy. Um, you know, we, uh, part of the training is, is to include, of course, who, you, who we can help. There's going to be a small portion of the people that have some other eye pathology or really heavy-duty astigmatism. But knowing where to send them is, is again, a very empowering. So I, I can't help you, but I know, where you, I know where they can. So empowering these networks is a key to getting this problem solved. What's the most important lesson you learned from this work that you've been doing now for almost 15 years? Yeah, um, I would say it's that, that people come to this, especially at IELTS community, they come to it with preconceived notions. Um, when we first started doing it, we called these organizations, hey, would you like, you know, we can help you bolt on eye care. Oh, no, that's too difficult. We don't want to do that. So getting over that hurdle of, not it's really easy it's really inexpensive um, you can do this uh, it is for us to, to get to get to that critical distribution that that, um, that that mass distribution capability so getting that piece of information out there and overcoming that hurdle of uh, the, the bias of well we're not eye health professionals that's not what we do that mission creep um, you know the task shifting whatever it is really it's the only way we're going to be able to solve something like this um, you know, we look at other problems, you know, malaria, polio, you know, we have made massive ep global efforts. We've realized how big of an issue it was and go in and solve that. The um, fact that we think that, well, it's not that we don't think it, the fact that the glasses hasn't become that sort of, like, well, what do people do when they, when they reach 45 and they need reading glasses? What, where, where, what is the problem? What do we do with those 10, 12, 15% of students that cannot see the chalkboard? You know, they get pushed to the, to the side. Um, this is a problem that can be solved and overcoming that, you know, that, that's, so that's my biggest barrier so far, my biggest hurdle is yeah. educating people that it is easy, yeah. That's great. As you think back on this, uh, clearly it was related to your job in the Marines, but what was it that intrinsically motivated you to really pursue this? Uh, it's one thing to say there's a logistical problem with the way, the stupid way we're doing glasses. It's another thing to say, 
I think I'm going to spend the next 15 years of my life solving this problem. Yeah, um, you know, I, I would say there's a, probably have a host of things. You know, one is that that I would never have been able to get educate, you know, to, to get the education that I got to become a United States Marine um, had I not lived. I lived in the UK when I was a kid, and I got my first pair of glasses. I think at seven or eight years old, and it, you know, it it was point of you know, it was eye opening. It was just like, whoa, this is this is what the world looks like. And then I have two sons that are in the same boat, you know, that, that got their glasses when they were eight and 10 or 11, you know, and very, very young. And my wife wears eyeglasses. Um, and then seeing people, you know, seeing that it was an issue and realizing, you know, I, I said, this is the problem. I, I understood the problem. I said, this is what someone needs to do. And I kind of, my gap analysis was someone needs to invent a device that does this, someone needs to implement this. And nobody was, and I said, "Well, I'll keep pushing. I'll, I'll, I'll do something." And then it just became bigger and bigger. And then I had friends that helped me, that joined my organization, that have made, you know, that made it successful and becoming more successful. And I, when I took the device to now a friend of mine, this ophthalmologist at Johns Hopkins Wilmer Eye Institute, it was just, you know, it was a very crude device. It was 3D printed, and the lens was cut. And I handed it to him, and he said, you know, this is a professional, David Friedman is a professional. And he looked at it and said, well, this is going to change the world. And that was that first bit of, wow, really? No, this, this, because he was so aware of the problem. He studying it his, his whole professional career. Um, and he'd done study after study of how to simplify the process. And no one had come up with a device that made it this easy to get in both eyes. He saw that the end of the tunnel before I did. And that was sort of like, okay, it's a, I need to push hard because if he thinks it's good, then that sort of, and then another professional, uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Moore from New England College of Optometry, he said the same thing. And he's, so I've got these two really premier academics um, from that, from the eye health world that have, that have, that believe in it. And I said, okay, then I'll keep pushing. And it was, it's been great. It's been a great journey. Amazing. Kevin, what's your superpower? <laughs> my superpower. Um, my superpower, I guess, is to is to in in this one little little niche of eyeglasses, it's to it's to recognize that the the, the solution doesn't have to be difficult. You can make a simple solution that works, um, and 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 you you have to think about it from 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 end to end. You know, as you know, you can't you like for instance you saw it was green four and or green one and you know and so on if it's if you've got decimals in there negative one and a quarter negative 5.25 it becomes complicated so my superpower is to simplify stuff so that i can understand it and if i can understand it then anybody can understand it <laughs> um so simplify the process and, and make a simple solution that that doesn't i mean you know that's probably not the best answer but <laughs> It's all I got. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Now, Kevin, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people yeah. how they can learn more about Global Vision 2020 and how they can connect with you personally? Absolutely. Uh, so our website is gv, that's Gulf Victor, 2020.org. Um, and there's lots of videos and, and how our system works. Um, there's a donate button. We'd love to, you know, love to increase our donor. Uh, pool that would be fantastic um and my email is uh you can give me an info at gv2020.org um and then our phone numbers on the website uh that would be fantastic to hear from you if you have any any distribution churches that want to distribute or you know for people that travel um we'd be happy to talk to you fantastic well kevin thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today we wish you every success in bringing 2020 vision to the world Thanks, Evan. Greatly appreciated. All righty. Let's do some good. At Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. 
GoodCrowd.school, 5% of what you pay to learn how to make a difference goes to nonprofits working to eradicate extreme poverty, improve global health, and reverse climate change by 2045. So when you take a course to learn how to change the world, you do change the world. Get started at GoodCrowd.school today. Thanks for tuning in to the Your Mark on the World Show, the Social Impact Podcast. Please subscribe via YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. Mm-hmm.